I know, class of 2018, that you all have courage. I know that your lifelong friends formed in Ford or Mem or Conant and your countless interactions with the adults in this most caring of places have helped change you. The totality of all that is Williston has fundamentally changed who you are. Embrace change, but at the same time, remain steadfast to your ideals and convictions so that you can become a positive agent of change for the good. Our keynote speaker today embodies this essential life principle. Since graduating from Williston in 2002, Pierce Freelon has been a hip hop artist, activist, filmmaker, professor, and community builder. He strives to be a mind changer in his hometown of Durham, North Carolina, where he was recently a candidate for mayor. He was the youngest person ever appointed by the governor of North Carolina to serve on the North Carolina Arts Council. And music and the arts are, for Pierce, a vehicle to draw people together. I will let him tell you more of his story, but suffice it to say, we are delighted to welcome back to his alma mater, this millennial on the move, Mr. Pierce Freeland. Seniors, what up? <laughs> it is so nice to be back uh, here at Williston. Um, <clears throat> so, just a little backstory. I was really nervous about delivering this speech today. I've given a lot of speeches, but this is probably the most nervous I've been uh, being back here on this campus. Um, and I, I didn't actually have anything prepared in, until yesterday. I wrote it in my journal. So we're just going to read from my journal if that's cool. All right. <laughs> So this is uh, my entry from Friday, May 25th, 2018. Tomorrow, I will deliver the commencement speech at my alma mater, Williston, Northampton. Yesterday, Headmaster Bob Hill called me. He wanted to see a copy of my speech. <laughs> I didn't have one, because I'm writing it on the plane right now. So my first message to the Willie graduating class of 2018 is, it's okay to procrastinate. <laughs> you can still be successful. <laughs> and I'm like 90% sure this will be the best speech you hear all day. So, yeah. Now let me tell you why I have this confidence. All right? I'm confident because like you, I'm a wildcat. I've been trained by one of the elite institutions in the world. I've sung with the Catawallers. Any Catawallers out there? Yeah, okay, that's the male singing group, for those of y'all who don't know. Um, I was the lead in the school play. We did uh, Guys and Dolls my senior year. Actually, our whole football team was uh, a, a part of that play production, so that was really exciting. But more importantly, this is where I learned to write. It's where I learned to speak, do public speaking. It's where I learned to think. Um, I was nurtured by a community of educators and coaches and friends whose impact and words of wisdom have lasted a lifetime. And, well, I haven't been alive for a whole lifetime. I'm only 34, but it's been good for like 15, 16 years. Um, so I want to tell you about one of the people who have shaped my life and inspired me on my journey. Her name is Cherie Ann Gordon. She was a senior at Williston when I was a sophomore a graceful, intelligent, warm, and hilarious black woman. And uh, one of the only black women in my life at the time, uh, I don't know what it's like now, but when I was a student here, there were virtually no uh, adults of African descent on this campus at all. No faculty, coaches, staff, not even a groundskeeper who looked like me. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I had wonderful mentors. I just reconnected with uh, Coach Conroy and, uh, and Mr. Gunn. Uh, people who have really, um, you know, shaped my confidence and, and uh, were, are still a part of my life and, and my mind often today. Um, but it could be also incredibly isolating and frustrating, especially the first time, for example, I heard a racial slur in the locker room or when I had to argue with the seniors in Ford Hall about the Confederate flag they had hanging in their dorm. But we as a community, we had Cherie. She always had a loving smile and a compliment and good advice and good vibes. And when I was sad, she would lend me her miseducation of Lauryn Hill CD. Y'all do know what a CD is, right? 
Okay, just making sure y'all y'all knew about CDs. Um, so I'm gonna jump off script for a second. Don't be scared. Um, so yesterday, <clears throat> as I'm writing, uh, I'd written my speech on the plane. I landed, and then I called some uh, some alums, some friends of mine, my roommate Siddiqui, uh, and my sister Maya, and my friend Kia, who are all like doctors and you know working for big PR firms. So your future is bright. Um, <laughs> And I, I read them my, my speech, and they were like, oh, you got to tell the story about uh, water polo, Cherie and water polo. So here's a brief story about uh, Cherie. Um, so when Cherie came to Williston, uh, she could not swim. Uh, and that's like a stereotype for black people. We don't like getting our hair wet. We, don't, we can't swim, all right? Um, and, and it's one that's not true, but, you know, she, it happened to be true for her. So uh, not only did she teach herself to swim here at Williston, but by the time she was a senior, she was the captain of the water polo team. And for those of you who ever played water polo, like that's not just doggy paddle, you know? <laughs> you gotta tread water, it takes a lot of, you know, a, a lot of swimming uh, ability to be able to do that. So that epitomizes for me what Cherie was about. She, when she did something, she did it well. Uh, she went in and, uh, and she held nothing back. Um, so that's, I think, is a lesson for y'all, is you find what your passion or your interest is, or if you're going to do something, do it like a wildcat, like go hard. Um, so anyway, uh, back to my um, journal. Uh, Cherie didn't just accept the status quo, she disrupted it. In 1999, uh, here at Williston, uh, we did not recognize Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It was just a regular day with regular classes. Well, I mean, we recognized it, but we didn't get like class off. Um, and uh, so Cherie helped us organize a strike. Uh, she was the president of a student group called the A4s, the African American Awareness Association, and we called this emergency meeting to discuss institutional racism, all right? And so some of us, to be honest, like some of us were just trying to get out of class. Um, <laughs> but we were like, yeah, we're gonna talk about this big topic. Um, and you know it was an important meeting because we blocked off the whole top section of the stewbop. And uh, there were three issues on the table. Not only was there no black faculty here, not only did we not recognize Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, but they banned do-rags in the school dress code. So some of y'all might not know what a do-rag is. Uh, forgive me. A do-rag is like a, a silky velvet massage for your scalp. It helps us get waves in our hair. Anyway, when they came for the do-rags, we were like, that's it. We're walking out of class. So it was noon on Martin Luther King Jr. Day in 1999. We all stood up in our class. We walked out. We met over there at the Lion. Is the Lion still there? Yeah, there's the Lion. OK. And, uh, and we did a march. We marched through campus. We marched in downtown East Hampton. There was like, like one CVS there at the time. It was very small. Um, and then we came back to the Stubop. While all our peers were in class, uh, we played spades and listened to Outkast all day. Um, and it was cool, but, but Cherie wasn't there just for the, you know, for the leisure of it. She had a list of demands. She helped us think through a process, and we came up with a list of demands. One of the main demands was for Williston to do more, to attract talented faculty and staff to the campus, to do some aggressive recruiting, to reach into their networks and their pocketbooks and just do better for us. But not just black students, but for all students, for queer students, Latinx, Muslim, and Arab students, you know, more diversity, more community, more mentors, more different stripes of wildcats. And we got what we demanded. The head, well, they were called headmaster at the time, um, but uh, the head of school convened a, a search panel of students and parents and faculty uh, to attract and seek out diverse teachers and families to join our community. And it wasn't immediate. It, didn't, it wasn't like overnight. It took about two years. But finally, we made some progress and scored some hires. Um, so first, shouts out to Williston for doing the work to meet the demands of the students. And we identified a problem, they listened, they heard us, and they addressed it. Um, so we didn't actually hire that faculty member until after I graduated, which was a full three years after Riri left. But the seeds that she planted had finally uh, produced fruit. So this is my advice for you. It's as you go out into this world, I want you to be like Riri. Remember her. 
What is the thing in the world that you want to change? What is the paradigm that you are going to shift? Seriously, take a minute, think about it. Maybe it's something big like ending poverty or global warming. Maybe it's something personal like sharing a playlist with a classmate or leading a protest at your university or your workplace. But I encourage you all to take a good look at this world and in the words of the great science fiction writer Octavia Butler, shape change. Shape change. Ever since I left campus, that's what I've tried to do. Last year, in my hometown in Durham, North Carolina, I ran for mayor. Um, and that's what I was trying to do with that campaign, was shape change. In Durham, I run a community center called Black Space, where we teach kids things like coding and beat making and 3D printing. We are shaping change in their lives. As a filmmaker, I was just maybe about a month ago in New York at the Tribeca Film Festival uh, premiering an animated film about the construction of race. It's called The History of White People in America. Um, and it was really cool. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg uh, has selected our film out of 5,000 films uh, to be uh, included in the Tribeca Film Festival. And this is, a, thank you. Thank you. And I wrote and co-directed this film that is shaping people's consciousness around the construction of race. So my question for y'all, seniors, what is your story? What is your film? What is your big idea? What is your verse? What goes on your canvas? This should be the central question which will guide you over the next five to 10 years. So Sheree helped put me on this path and trajectory. I've toured around the world. I'm, uh, you mentioned I'm a hip hop artist. Um, I've been to places like the Democratic Republic of Congo, Panama, Senegal. I've rocked stages in Ethiopia, Fiji, Kenya, Brazil, and the Dominican Republic. But I've even won a, a, an Emmy Award for this work. But do you want to know the first stage? I ever rapped on? It's that one, right over there. Right here on this campus. It was for Cherie's senior project. Uh, she asked me to write a rap over an instrumental of this Tony Braxton song, He Wasn't Man Enough. You shouldn't remember it, it's insignificant. Um, what's important is that she saw something in me and gave me the opportunity to develop my confidence in my sauce. That's like, y'all ever heard of sauce before? <laughs> yeah, so clearly I have the sauce now, but she helped me develop the recipe for the sauce, <laughs> all right? Um, and I wanna say, uh, you know, about Cherie, she passed away in 2015 from cancer and Yesterday, when I was on the plane and, and writing and thinking about her, uh, my wife this morning, she was like, that's so depressing. Like, how are you gonna end on that note? I was like, actually, I don't feel one hint of sadness right now. I didn't yesterday and I don't in this moment because she lived a full life. She never took one moment for granted and she embodied the spirit of a wildcat. She was resilient and brilliant and creative and warm and loving. She used to, there's another side story, she used to always say namaste. She was, that was how she greeted people when she saw them on campus. So just to give you an idea of the type of person she was. So as you go out into the world, I want you to, to consider this. What are you going to paint on your canvas? This world is a canvas. Um, paint something beautiful, something meaningful and something fulfilling, like Cherie did. So I want to close with uh, uh, that first moment. I mentioned my first uh, hip hop performance ever was right here on this campus. I was a, a sophomore. Where are my sophomores at? Somewhere. OK, there you are on the back. So I was, I was your age, and she was sitting where the seniors are sitting. Um, and she put on the Tony Braxton beat, and, and she had written this chorus that I wanna see if we can sing together, all right? So this half of the room, y'all are gonna say Williston is like paint on a palette, all right? Let me hear y'all. Williston is like paint on a palette. Williston is like paint on a palette. 
Okay, now y'all have the hard part, okay? <laughs> Any picture that you want, I'm telling you that you can have it, all right? Any picture that you want, I'm telling you that you can have it. Any picture that you want, I'm telling you that you can have it. Okay, close enough. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to do it twice, and then I, I want to hear if y'all can do it without me, all right? So it goes like this, five, six, eight. Williston is like paint on a palette. Any picture that you want, I'm telling you that you can have it. Hey, Williston is like paint on a palette. Any picture that you want, I'm telling you that you can have it. Come on. Give yourselves a big round of applause. So that was it. Williston is like paint on a palette, and you can paint whatever picture you want uh, because you were nurtured here in this wonderful, beautiful environment. So go forth, paint. Thank you.